Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's workshop. My name is Nina Ehrman. I am a life coach and facilitator. I work with people from all around the world, mostly leaders, CEOs, executives, and I focus on helping them to lead conscious and fulfilled lives on all levels to reinvent their health, their relationships, their financial life, their careers. It's really all interconnected. And today we're going to focus on one of my favorite topics, areas, and it's about relationships, right? I call this workshops the art of creating more loving and fulfilling relationships in your life because I truly believe it's an art. And if you understand how relationships work, you will have a much better experience, right? And one of the things I love to talk about when I talk about relationships is the idea of being an emotional adult rather than an emotional child. Last week, in the last week's workshop, I talked about emotional mastery, how to master your emotions and how important it is to understand how your thoughts create emotions. And today we're going to take this idea um, of the connection between thoughts and emotions into our relationships, right? It's one of my most favorite topics because I feel like if we can figure this one out, we can figure out how to become emotional adults, everything changes. Now, again, remember, and if you haven't watched the workshop, go ahead and, and, and re-watch it in the recording from last week so you get all of the concepts right. But one of the things we talked about is that all of our feelings are created by our thoughts. And feelings are really important because everything we do in life is because of how we think it will make us feel. So we are kind of on two different dimensions here. We want to feel great emotions, right? When, I, when people ask me, like, how do you want to feel around relationships? It's mostly loving and I want to feel connected and I want to feel... Um, you know, like I belong, belonging is a big one that people want to experience when we talk about relationships, right? And also we want to remind ourselves that emotions drive all of our actions. Anything you do is because of a feeling, but also it's caused by a feeling, right? Your feelings drive your actions. And we've covered this in detail in the first workshop. So, but so often, the way that we've been raised um, in our society, we've been raised to believe that our feelings are caused by the external world, that our feelings are caused by the relationships that we have in our lives and by external circumstances, by things that are happening to us. And when we believe that we aren't responsible for our feelings, when we're not responsible for how you know, we experience emotions in our body, we are an emotional childhood. And so the way I want you to think about is when, you know, you're a child, literally when you're a kid, you're so dependent on everybody else, right? You're dependent, everything external. I have a toddler, so I can talk to this. It's all about instant gratification, right? If they don't get what they want right away, they cry and they stump their feet and they want to change the circumstances, right? I don't get my ice cream. I, I'm going to cry until you get me the ice cream, right? It's very childish. So when you think about a child, children are dependent, they're dependent on their parents to solve for their emotions, right? And we cry when, when it's hurting, we cry when we want something. And as we get older, I want you to really think about it. And I'm sure you know, um, you know, you can tell me situations where this happened. Uh, with you or to you, with other people around you, we actually become very childish, right? Oh, I don't feel I belong or I don't feel I get what I want and I, I'm going to complain about it. I'm going to be the victim. And we actually taught that external things cause our internal emotions, right? This is what usually happens. Um, you know, when you look at the billboards and you see, well, if you get this thing, you're gonna be happy. Or if you achieve this job, you're gonna be happy. Or if you marry that guy, you're gonna be happy. Even when we go to school, right? Like 
sometimes I observe um, kids playing at the park and we're taught that other kids or other, other uh, people can hurt our feelings or like, oh no, no, Jimmy, don't hurt her feelings. Or we say, oh, you hurt mommy's feeling, don't hurt my feelings like that. We just say these things, not understanding that actually we're taking away the responsibility. Right. And so what it does, it creates this dependence on other people to create our feelings of positivity. But also we blame other people if we have negative emotions, everything external, right? What's happening in the world is causing my emotion. What's happening with other people is causing my emotion. What, you know, what I eat or don't, like my choices don't even matter that much because everything is externalized. And so when we're in emotional childhood, we're feeling like we're at the effect of the world, right? Can you follow this? Can you feel the scenario? And of course, when you ask people, are they emotional adult, uh, are they emotional ch children, right? If you, I don't want you ever to say to other people because they might be insulted, right? But again, you can't even cause their feelings, right? But when you think about this in a concept, it's if you believe that the external world is, is causing how you feel internally, what happens is you feel completely powerless. You're always trying to seek instant gratification from the outside. We're always trying to solve for emotions by something external. Now, most adults function in um, emotional childhood. Most of us are unconscious of, of this mechanism. So when you ask somebody like, if you ask somebody who's crying or you see somebody who is upset or frustrated and you ask them why you're upset, very rarely, unless you're in my community and you've done this work and you're very conscious of your thoughts, they'll tell you, well, it's because of the way I'm thinking or it's because of the way I'm choosing to think right now. This is a thought or a scenario or a story that is playing ahead in my mind. Most people will say, well, the same thing happened to me or I'm having a bad day or this person said this and this to me where I have just so much work to do. This is what's happening with me right now. They will blame it on the external and they wouldn't even call it blame. They'll truly believe that this is happening to them. So, what do we do when we are in emotional childhood? We try to get out of it and we try to change the world. We're trying to change the people in the world. We're trying to change the circumstances of the world to change how we feel. And it's very natural and most of us do it. Most of us that are unconscious do it. And believe me, I've been doing this work for a really, really long time. It still happens. And I catch myself and I'm like, okay, Nina, what's the story you're telling yourself right now? because it's the reality of what you're creating, the experience of what you're creating is certainly not serving you. Or I'll go with, if I catch myself early enough, I'll go with, okay, you're experiencing this frustration or upset or whatever, and you're blaming it on the other person. Try to be responsible for your own emotions and just have this mantra where I repeat it. I'm responsible, I'm responsible. And then, and this idea of emotional childhood is incredibly compounded by the concept that we're taught that we should be happy all of the time. And we talked about this last time as well. It's like, if I believe that I should be happy all of the time, and the reason we think we're not happy all the time is because of something external, then, then we, we become kind of control enthusiasts, right? We, we just want to control everything. We want to control the world and the people in it. And so we're starting changing jobs and changing friends and changing husbands and changing our majors. Uh, but it's not the real change, right? It's just almost like an escape, right? An escape of what we, we, we're, we're escaping from a negative feeling. And then we start overeating, over drinking. We talked about this kind of buffering concept last time as well. So I want you to think about areas in your life where you think something outside of you is providing you with happiness or something outside of you is providing you with, um, with sorrow, with frustration, right? And you're always wrong about it. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but at the same time, it's very empowering. Like people tell me all the time, Nina, when they learn this concept, they're like, oh my God, I'm responsible for all of it. And it can create this kind of burden or it can create this liberation. Oh God, I'm responsible for all of it. That means I can change all of it. I'm the one creating my experience. 
And it's actually the other people just become mirrors. They just become mirrors of what is happening inside of me. What is it that I need to heal more? What is it that I need to accept more? Where do I need to move into love more so I can experience what it is that I, that I actually want, right? And there is a caveat to this, right? When we think about thought work, there are of course circumstances that, would, that we can change and that we may want to change and that's totally fine. But my recommendation is always change how you feel first. And then from that better feeling, from that more empowered feeling, change the circumstance, okay? So this is why, you know, let me give you an example. For instance, if, um, if you're not happy in a relationship, right? You're talking about relationships today um, and you're gonna say, okay, I'm just gonna leave the relationship. That is an escape for me. That's like, okay, I'm not gonna work on it. I'm not gonna give it anything. I'm just gonna escape for it. So don't leave your relationship until you feel love within it. Don't change your job until you can find happiness within it. And then you can change it from that better place. Now, people say to me, you know, why are you talking about abusive relationships? I, you know, you should leave right away. We're not talking about abuse per se here. What we're talking about is kind of emotional responsibility in the moment, right? If, 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 if you say, you know, um, he said something and that's why I feel frustrated and I just want, don't want to be in that relationship. I'm just going to leave. See how that could become a pattern of your life if you're always, always in relationships where you kind of find yourself frustrated. And that's when I say, don't change the circumstance. Try to find as much wisdom. Try to find as much learning. Try to find as much love within it before you change the reality of the, of the um, interactions. And when you recognize that, when you step into emotional adulthood, that's when you get your power back, right? It's really important to come back to yourself and remind yourself, hey, that's not the person that's creating the reality for me. I'm feeling this way because of a choice, because of a thought that I'm thinking. It's not the situation's fault. It's because of my thinking. And I can change my thinking. Now, we just talked about this. It's like many of you will say, oh, that, Nina, but I don't control my thinking. I don't control my thoughts. And that's when the consciousness work and the thought work needs to be so important because you do have control over your thoughts. And it, actually, this is the only thing you have control over. You have control over your thoughts, over your emotions that then drive your actions and provide your results. The only thing that you don't have control over is the circumstances, is the people in your life, is anything you know external of you. And remember, feelings are the most important thing. They determine the quality of your life. So if you want to feel a different way, you want to have a different relationship with somebody, all you need to do is to change your thinking towards the person, to change your story about the person, to create more compassion and love. And then you can still leave the person. You can still love the person and leave the person, right? When people talk to me, it's like, oh, I had this one guy come to me after a conference and he's like, I, I really love your ideas, Nina. I really love these concepts. Uh, but I do feel frustrated. And I asked him why you feel frustrated. And he said, listen, my, my wife cheated on me. And um, it's, it's very frustrating. And I said, well, you're allowed to feel frustrated about this. But, but why? Tell me more. And he says, like, I just want to love her. And I said, wait, wait a minute. Nobody is forbidding you to love her. You can love her no matter what. And you can experience love even if she cheated on you. And it was such a big aha moment for him because he was like, oh God, I own my feelings. I can be in control of it. And I, I give way too much power um, to, to, to this woman around how I feel. And that's one of the things I really wanted to offer you today. Everything that we experience, we experience through emotions, through a feeling. So we can control our emotional life by learning the skill of emotional adulthood. And we literally take control over the entire experience over our relationships as well. Okay, so, and by the way, I'm not suggesting that you don't feel any negative feelings. We covered that as well, like, or pain. In fact, when somebody 
says terrible things to you, you might want to feel terrible, right? I don't want to... I don't want you to think that I'm telling you like just, oh, just change your thoughts and be in la la land. It's all just going to be positive and happy all the time. Now, that's not what I'm saying. Hear me say that. I want you to process all of your emotions. I just want to tell you that you're in control of it and you take responsibility for it. Yeah, that's very important. The reason why you're feeling terrible is because of, of how you think. The reason why you're feeling love is because of how you think. And also... Know that someone can say something terrible to me and it doesn't affect me at all, right? If I told you, listen, I really don't like your green hair and you'd be like, oh my God, I don't even have green hair. You'd just not take it personally, right? Like it would be like, okay, well, this woman said this to me, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's kind of neutral because you don't believe you have green hair. But if I told you, you're not disciplined enough, you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not a good mother, you're not a, you know, good friend, and you would kind of part of you would believe that, and you would make it a story in your head, this is when you would feel the frustration. Can you see that? It's so fascinating, right? We don't care about somebody's opinion. It's totally fine. It's the exact same thing, different thought will determine different emotion and will drive a different action. Remember how your feelings are the ones that are causing your actions. So take responsibility for your thinking, take responsibility. And when you recognize that your emotional life is generated from within you 100%, that all of your consciousness is generated within you, you have the universe by the tail. It's all internal, no matter what's happening outside of there, you are always in control. You don't have to rely or be dependent on anyone. You don't have to depend on the, the world to turn a certain way, right? You don't have to depend on anything external in terms of, you know, a price or um, a competition or, um, you know, the newest bag, like all of that is just internal. And you can decide to be very excited about it as you can decide to be a victim or a blame. Okay, now, um, when you're in a situation with somebody, let's say it's yelling at you, like a lot, I get a lot of questions around this, and they're saying terrible things to you, it may feel more powerful in that instance to yell back. It may feel more powerful to, they call it like this, to stick up for yourself, like to say, no, 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 you don't talk to me this way, or I hate you, I don't, I don't want to talk to you about this anymore, don't treat me this way, whatever you want to say. It may feel more powerful, but I want to offer to you that when somebody's yelling at you, it has no power in your experience if you kind of don't take it on. Until you think about it, it has no power over you, right? It's almost like the moment you start yelling, you actually lost control. So we're talking about emotions first and foremost again right we're not talking about physical abuse in this situation okay so obviously if somebody physically hurts you you will feel physical pain what we're talking about is emotional adulthood in most of the situations you want to control it and what i would like to offer you is to take full responsibility let go of expectations of other people um, and kind of move into a space of I want to call it invincibility. It's almost like nobody can make you feel anything without your permission. Nobody can make you feel anything at all. And this is how you're able to clear up your brain and take self-empowering decisions for yourself no matter what. The truth is you cannot control other people. Keep on saying this. And it's like at one point I was thinking of writing a book how to control other people, or how, how, how to make other people love you, or how to, you know, it's like this how-to guides. And I think a lot of people would be interested in it because we all want to control other people so much. But we can't control other people. The only people that we can control is ourselves, right? And even there, we have so much work to do. Now, most of us are taught and raised and grew into emotional childhood way into adulthood. And because of this, many of us use a system or a mechanism that one of my teachers, um, she called it the manual, like manuals. And it's basically, you know, an instruction book for other people. 
to follow so you can feel good. Now stay with me. It's very interesting. If you think about, you know, the washing machine and you think about the dishwasher or the dryer or whatever, it comes with a manual. It comes with an instruction of how things should work, right? And often when we go into relationships, we feel like those relationships come with an instruction as well. So imagine that if you believe that the world is responsible for how you feel, then you're going to want to tell the world how to behave so you can feel good. You're following this, right? So it's instruction for other people. It's an attempt to control the circumstances. Most of us have these kind of operating manuals that we've written for other people and for our lives. And notice that it's almost like you've written this manuals and then you expect other people to, con to comply. I've, I've seen this very early in my coaching career. I was coaching people one-on-one -on -one and different, different um, scenarios would come up and um, I would point out to people, listen, you have this very thick kind of very long manual for your husband, let's say, or for themselves, right? Some of some of us are very, very hard on ourselves. So we have this thick manual, operating manual on how we should behave in order to love ourselves, right? But most of the time would be with other people. So I'll start laughing with my clients and I'll say, listen, do you realize that, you know, your husband has this, this, this manual that you have this written out kind of instruction book for your husband. Have you ever, have, has he ever read it kind of thing, right? Does he know how he's supposed to function properly for you to feel good? And most of us, of course, will say no, because we don't even realize that we do this. We would say that the reason for being very upset has, you know, ha has a story to it, right? We'll say, well, I, just, I only wanted to say this, I only have this instruction because he did this and this, or he was behaving a different way, or she said, you know, a, a certain thing that didn't belong kind of in my world. And that's why I needed to stand up for myself. I needed to tell him what to do. I needed to um, um, write it out in some way. So the manual is kind of a rule book, right? Of how the other person should behave. And we've all tried it. We've all tried to control other people. And even though it may seem, sometimes it might seem justified to have expectations of other people. It's also quite damaging and frustrating for ourselves to do so. And uh, I don't wanna sound like you shouldn't have ever expectations of other people. Right, because some people will say to me, "Oh, well, what do you mean? I shouldn't tell my husband to, um, uh, you know, iron, or shouldn't tell my husband to make dinner, or shouldn't tell my wife to take care of the kids." Like we can't have expectations. The only difference is when they don't comply, when they don't follow your manual, that you don't get upset about it because what happens is you then make it mean that they can make you feel a certain way. Well, so you are responsible for your proper feelings. You are responsible for the reality that your experiences, right? We have these belief systems that other people would just have, um, should just behave a certain way. And then we would be happy. The problems, the problem is that we don't realize that we're doing this unconsciously, right? We think that we have very reasonable expectations of people in life and they should behave in a way that's reasonable. But like notice what's reasonable for us might not be always reasonable for the other person. One of the first things that I think is really important to remember is that adult people have the ability and the freedom to behave however they would like, right? It's like, this is very, very strong, a strong statement, but bear with me. Like this includes also you, like there's nothing you have ever to do and nothing that anyone else has to do for you. One of the challenges this comes with, like often in modern therapy, they will sit you down when you're in couple therapy and they'll tell you, this has happened to a lot of my clients. Uh, they'll tell you, okay, now let's look at our needs. Let's make a list of all of your needs and 
And the other person makes a list of all of your needs. And then we try to match the needs and we try to make the other person happy. So the other person can kind of try to meet those needs and those expectations. And in my belief system, and I want to offer you this as well, I think that's a setup for disaster. I think we are responsible for meeting our own needs first. And we're having such big trouble already doing that. And now imagine we're even more responsible for the needs of other people. And we're trying to make them happy. All of a sudden, we're not only taking care of ourselves, but then we're also taking care of this other person that we genuinely love and we care for. But honestly, what I believe is the kind of better, wiser way to think about it is that you take care of you, you take, I take care of me, and then when we come together, we have such an amazing time, right? And another way of describing this, and I want to maybe show this as, a, um, as an image, is that um, it's kind of a C looking for another C to complete each other, right? You could just see, okay, this is my C is looking for your C, and so when we come together, we form a whole, we form a circle. But what I am proposing is that we're already whole and complete and we're going to work on our emotional um, adulthood on our own and we're going to become as conscious as we can, right? So we're already complete. And when we come together, we're actually overlapping. And I love the idea of this kind of overlapping circle, which is the sign of an kind of, an, you know, um, eternity, right? It's like we are, we're, we're, existing together in this beautiful completeness and wholeness, right? Um, if you haven't watched, there is a very short uh, kind of animated um, uh, cartoon by, um, that was written by Shan Silverstein and it's, it's the big O meets, um, it's called the missing piece actually, it's called the missing piece. Uh, and the missing piece is meeting the big O. I highly recommend you watch it and you'll see for yourself how this missing piece is always looking for the complement, uh, complementarity. He, he wants to be complete with something else. And then he realizes that actually he can grow on his own. He can become something big and then he can just roll with the big O that's already complete and doesn't need to fill any holes, right? So when we acknowledge and realize that we do have these kind of expectations and manuals for other people, and we start to take responsibility and have our own rules for our own kind of our own lives, this is when every, everything changes. The truth is we can only control ourselves and we don't want to control other people because it just takes so much of energy away. And if you've tried to control someone else, and believe me, I've tried many times, you know, it's just not working. Like people don't like to be controlled. People don't like to be told what to do. They don't like, it's so much nicer to show the example, to be the example of what's possible and be the leader and have other people follow you from that, from that empowered sense, right? So the first step is to have a look at the people in your life that you have manuals for, including yourself. And, and just be very honest and truthful with yourself. What is it that you want them to do differently? What is it that you want yourself to do differently? How is it that you want to change? What do you think? And I'm going to give you the answer. The reason why you would ever want to change somebody else or yourself is because of how you think it will make you feel in this in having this changed behavior, right? Remember, it's all about the feeling. It's not even about the other person as much. It's all about, if you think about, oh, I wanna do it for my children. I wanna do it for the, you know, the world. I wanna do it for the environment. Actually, it's all about you. It's all inside. It's all an inside out job. So we're not taking responsibility for how we're feeling because we're giving all of that responsibility to the behavior of the other person. So we have gotten very confused, right? So. If you guys are feeling like somebody's acted crazy and it's because, you know, they're behaving a certain way, like, uh, you know, on the road, often we see it and notice what's going on in your head, how you're judging, which stories you're building, what's happening within you. And then choose consciously, do I want to believe that right now? Does it serve me? What emotion am I creating? When I'm reminding myself that the only way I'm trying to I'm trying to get this person to behave a certain way 
just because I want to feel a certain way, right? I don't want you to cut me off. I don't want you to, uh, it, when I'm standing in line, I want you to cut me off on the highway. I, uh, I don't want you to be rude. All of these things, it's like, notice what's coming up in you because all of these people that you're meeting are opportunities for growth. All of these people are opportunities for you to make higher choices, to make higher choices that are coming from love rather than from fear, from compassion rather than from you know, frustration or, um, or anxiety. Someone else's behavior kind of determine how you feel. That's basically what I'm saying. It's the only, the only thing that actually determines my feelings is my thinking and my story about it. And then I can kind of take a deep breath and stop to control everybody so much and let go. For me, it was such a huge liberation. I remember that I don't need to do anything. I don't have to do anything. When people tell me, I just have to do this. And I have to, I have to, I have to. And I'm like, no, you don't really have to. Um, try to um, change it out to, I choose to, I want to change, change my behavior. I want to think about the people um, in a different way. Think about the people in your life that you have manuals for. Think about who you really want to change and try to start at it from, okay, I want them to do this and this and this. How would I feel when, if they did everything perfectly, if they would, you know, make all these changes, do all these things for me, bring me flowers, wish me happy birthday, call me, you know, every day, whatever it is you want them to do. And just cultivate that feeling and see what are the thoughts that produce that? Can I think other thoughts? Can I, can I surround myself um, with kind of a, a thinking scenario that would produce these thoughts for me? It's a little bit different if you have children because it's your job to help them write the operation manual and you're doing a lot of choices for them around the house and stuff like this, or, or if you're a boss and you're um, you know, having people that work for you, you need, to, you need to have expectations. You're literally writing a, ma a manual and so on. But if you're setting clear expectations for your children or for your employees and you have clear consequences, not for meeting these expectations, there's no reason for you to be emotionally hurt when they fail them. So I'll give you an example. For instance, if you know your child, let's say you have the agreement with your child that if they don't make that bed, they don't get to watch a movie, right? And let's say they didn't make the bed. You don't need to get upset with them. You don't need to tell them you hurt mommy's feelings because that's not the truth. It's just you decided if, if, you, if you're frustrated and hurt, you've decided that you made the choice that because of what they did, now you got to feel that feeling. But if you have very clear expectations, you're like, okay, you didn't make your bed, you don't get to make a movie, you can be very neutral about it. And same with your uh, employees, like the best bosses and parents are very consistent about clear expectations, clear consequences. And you'll know if you have a manual for your children or employees, uh, by whether you're emotionally affected by their behavior. This is when you know, and this is when you start managing um, your, your mind and you can start parenting for, from a cleaner place or managing from a cleaner place. And the emotions are removed, right? It's your job becomes much, much simpler because it's not about your relationship any longer. It's like, it becomes kind of like a place of neutrality emotionally. It's about about the employer or the child that didn't do what they said they would do if you have an agreement. And that's why I always say like, make an agreement with your kids. They are very smart. They understand exactly what's going on. But then it's almost like manipulation, right? When we say, oh, you didn't make your bed, you made mommy cry, right? If you tell your child, you know, you didn't make your dad every day, you know, it's gonna, it's, you hurt mommy's feelings, right? If you don't make your bed, and, it's, I'll be very sad, right? See how that's a manipulation. It's almost like emotional blackmail. It's not a healthy way to manage your children or people in general. 
right? So if you're a manager at work, if you're a parent, you can set very clear expectations, provide feedback. And if your employees, for instance, don't honor your request, they don't have to follow through um, on, on your expectations because they're adults. You just have very clear consequences. You ask them to go, you ask them to leave, or you maybe have, a, have another trial period or something. You get to decide whether it will affect you emotionally. Totally up to you. Okay, what else did I have for you? Um, so a couple of things about um, maybe a unconditional love. People come to me a lot and they'll say, you know, like this person that I told you about earlier, like, I just want to love, let's say my mom. I just want to love my parents. I just want to love my husband, my wife, my partner, my children. But because they're doing all these things, I just don't can get myself to overcome myself. And you can make requests, right? You can tell people, I want to I want to make this request. I have this expectation from you. I really want you to bring me flowers on my birthday. I really want you to, um, you know, pick up the phone when I call you, all these things. And sometimes it's a want match, right? Sometimes it's just an instant thing. You say, okay, you want this. I want this. It's all good. The problem occurs, it's when we are out of alignment, Right? And that's when unconditional love comes in. It's when you decide to love the person for who they are, not what they do. This is when we're connecting to our essence. This is when we are um, you know, setting boundaries from love, when we're able to say no from love. And when you tie your emotional happiness to whether they respond to your calls or not, that's when you get yourself into big trouble. When you start banging your head against the wall, but trying to manipulate people so they'll behave in a way you want them to behave so you can feel better. That's when it gets tricky. That's when you're going to get yourself into the spiral of negativity. And the alternative is very easy. Like you make a request, they don't honor your request, you take responsibility for how you feel about it, right? And you can decide, I guess I said, to love, like unconditional love is virtually without conditions, right? And it, another thing that I want to offer you is that you can decide to love no matter what. Like imagine you'd walk down the street and all the people you'd meet, you just decide to love. So now listen to this, not because they deserve your love or because you know, you're kind of blind by the love and you have pink glasses on, but just because it feels better for you. Like imagine you can be in love most of the time, right? And I said in, in our last call that it is contrast right you'll only experience love when you experience the opposite and opposite feelings you always ex experience happiness when you know what sadness is but you get to choose your emotions it's like going to the buffet it's like going to a bar and saying that what is the drink that i'm going to order today you could decide where you're going to do with your time and how are you going to respond you need to make sure you're thinking about those changes and what you want based on what you have control over, right? And what you have control over are your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, and thus your results. And you do not, I promise, have to control over anybody. Like you don't have this control. You don't know how they will behave. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So just be in that space of compassion and love and understanding most of the time and sometimes you will fall out of it and you'll feel an energetic disbalance and that's just to show you where you need to go right it's like don't blame yourself oh my god i'm out of alignment i'm out of love like people say to me oh i screamed at my kids again and then they blame themselves for it and they create the story that they're not good enough parents or not good enough um you know mothers and they go into the guilt trip and that's not positive either right because you're just not serving them, right? Because it's a story upon a story. We blame the blame, we worry about the worry, we fear about the fear. So emotional responsibility, unconditional love, staying out of drama. That's another thing that 
I want to say it's like I am a master at escalation now over times, so, you know, if you if you don't know this, we have seven children between my husband and I. So there's, you know, a lot of energy and a lot of energy management. And sometimes that's what I say when I present myself. I'm like an energy manager. I manage relationships. I can see things happen simultaneously. I I can and feel people's energy. Sometimes when I walk into the room, I'm sure you've had this experience. When you walk into the room and you can feel people's negativity or energy. And then I remind myself, I'm always responsible for emotions. None of it has power over me. And I just decide and choose to have a good time. I decide to be in love. I decide to be in compassion, not for their sake, but for my sake. And it might sound selfish almost, right? To say, well, I'll experience unconditional love for me. But I'll just tell you, it just feels better, right? And uh, maybe if we drop the manuals, and we drop the expectations, we will experience that liberation, uh, that freedom of fully being us, not being, not, not people pleasing, not um, mm, trying to make other people happy because that's the other extreme, right? Either we're in the blame mode or we're gonna be like, oh my God, yeah, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna follow your manual so you can feel happy. And that's the other extreme. If you're on that side, then I want to tell you that anything you do, like for the people pleasing part, people pleasing is actually lying. It's actually not in your true self and not, it's not in alignment with who you are. And it's actually not helping the other people because if you don't want to do something and you people pleasing for other people, you actually build up a lot of resentment and the other person doesn't get to experience your true you because you're lying to yourself and you're lying to them. And I, I, I use this word, this word lie, which is a very strong word to wake some people up from their over-sacrifice and making other people happy and, and kind of fixing situations all of the time, which is energetically a disbalance. Um, and then they don't get to enjoy you, right? Because you're always trying to adapt to their needs. So that's really important to me to bring this along. We talked about this being an art, right? Art of creating fulfilling and loving relationships within you first, because remember everything is a mirror. If you are creating this wonderful feeling inside of you, that's how it's going to be reflected to the world. So I hope you enjoyed this workshop. If you have any questions or comments, um, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to provide any information. You um, may contact me on my email. It's Nina, N-I-N-A, at Erman, U-R-M-A-N, dot F-R. I'm based out of France, Paris, which is the city of love and the city of life and light. So thank you so much for your attention, and um, I'll see you next week.